Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. All right, Lindsay Smith here with realagriculture.com. I am here with John Gawlowski, provincial entomologist with MAFRI. We are talking Bertha armyworms. So right next to you there, John, we've got a Bertha trap. Uh, certainly some counts are coming in. What do farmers need to know about uh, Bertha numbers and, and this season with Bertha armyworm? Well, what they need to know about the numbers is that the trap we have here, it's called a uni trap. And it's got a, uh, a pheromone lure inside. This lure is attractive to male Bertha armyworm moths. So they can smell this from a little ways away. They get drawn in. And when they come into our trap, they fly down a funnel. And they end up inside the bucket trap here. And so right now we've got about maybe 30 Bertha armyworm. These would be all male moths that have been caught. So again, they were drawn in by the pheromone. There's an insecticide block in there that kills them. So what we do is we count what's in here on a weekly basis, and we use this to forecast the risk for a region. Now one thing that's very critical to, to realize is this is all regional risk that we're forecasting. So if by chance this trap had, say, 500 moths in it this week, and I had 500 again the next week. You're going into a higher risk category for that region, but not the field the trap is in. This is catching male moths. What is laying eggs in the field is females. The females like a flowering crop of canola. So if the crop is flowering, when they're laying eggs, they're more likely to be in there. So a lot... Uh, a lot of what determines how many larvae will be in the field later on is the staging of the crop. So the traps help and regionally you can forecast with these traps what the risk is for a general region. But again, they're not a field specific device. So if you have one of these in your field and you are getting a high number, it doesn't mean that you will necessarily have a lot of larvae in that particular field. But fields in that region agronomists and farmers should be watching. Some of them uh, may have lots of larvae. So now what part, so what part of the season and what part, where do they cause economic damage? Okay, so right now we've got moths flying. They're ending up in our traps and the females in the evening are laying eggs on the plants. So that's what's happening right now. Now it usually takes about a week for those eggs to hatch. And then you, they start going through, they've got six stages of growth for the larva. The first stage or two, people barely notice. They're tiny little caterpillars. They don't have a lot of color at first, then they turn green. They don't do a lot of damage. It's usually mid-July to mid-August when most of the feeding is occurring. That's when you'll have the larger caterpillars. So that's your, your most critical period for crop scouting is that mid-July to mid-August period. Right now, if growers do want to look, again, the, the traps will show the adults, you could start looking on leaves, turning over leaves, looking for the egg masses. Uh, what it would look like is the, the, they lay their eggs in big clusters. So you would see a cluster of eggs often on the underside of the leaves. That's what you'd be looking for now. Uh, today is July 3rd, so it's early in July. There may be egg masses, but that's probably all you would see. So way too early to be worried about control. Um, in another, say, week, it's a good time to start looking under the debris or on the ground and looking for the, the larger larva. That's what you scout and that's what you use to determine is a field uh, needing to be controlled or not. And so now if control, if they reach an economic threshold and you are going to head out there controlling, is this an early morning, uh, an early evening? When do you target these larvae? Okay, uh, the, this is an, uh, a nocturnal species of larva, meaning they eat at night and they hide during the day. So during the day, they're going to be under any kind of debris or stubble, cracks in the soil, under rocks. They're going to be hiding during the day. So to be spraying, you're, gonna, you're going to have your best success spraying at night. 
And if that's not an option, early morning is probably the next best thing. But if possible, spraying uh, as late in the day as possible is good. Now the other thing you need to consider with Bertha armyworm is whether or not a crop is flowering. Um, flowering canola is very attractive to bees. And honeybees will increase the yield of your canola. So there is a benefit to having bees actively working in the field. So that's the other thing you need to factor in. You could be reducing yield potential somewhat by reducing bee activity if you spray when it's not needed or if you miss time a spray and uh, if you're spraying a flowering field of canola. Now if you do need to spray, suppose you did have 50 Bertha armyworm larvae per meter square in here and they were doing a lot of damage and you wanted to spray this field. Going at night, uh, honeybees forage during the day, they go back to the hive at night. So the best thing you can do to protect that yield increase the bees would provide is spray in the evening if possible. Uh, there are products that are less harmful to bees. You could choose one of those as well. And of course, let the beekeepers know as well. Great. Thanks so much, John. You're welcome.